Okay, hear me out. Basim could actually be the best protagonist an Assassin's Creed game has ever received. Okay, I know how that sounds, especially when one of the most iconic characters in gaming comes from Assassin's Creed. And I know that Basim as a character was hated by many in Valhalla, but perhaps that would make his character development even more meaningful. Let me explain. In Valhalla, Basim is a shrewd assassin that tricks his way into the lives of Eivor and Sigurd. What seems like a petty attempt at revenge is later shown to be a heartfelt act of redemption. Sure, that doesn't make us like him anymore because he's turned against our bro Eivor. And I don't think the writers originally intended Basim to get any more screen time than in Valhalla, so back in 2020, that was probably all we were going to get. But maybe, if executed correctly, the story and writing of Mirage can draw from our hatred of Basim to convey a true understanding of his evolution as a character. When I say Basim could be the best protagonist the AC series has ever gotten, I don't think we as players will come to love him as much as we do Ezio, because we won't get three games to flesh out his character as much as Ezio was developed. But I do think that if written well, this could be the most heartfelt, emotional, painfully beautiful take on an Assassin's Creed story we have ever seen. The life of an assassin or hidden one is all-consuming. You don't get time to have friends or a family apart from the Brotherhood. You are a blade in the crowd, destined to change the course of history, yet never renowned, never acknowledged, never known, never understood. You are a ghost. That has to take a huge mental toll on the individual, some assassins more than others. Seeing Basim is a mentally fragile character during the start of the game as it is, entering a life of service to a cause he might not necessarily align with would, in my opinion, only send him down a more fragmented path. Let's imagine the start of the game where Basim meets Roshan and decides to join the Brotherhood. After a few years in training, something happens that makes him question everything. After seeing the deep connection and clan-like relationship the Hidden Ones have with one another, Basim felt an innate desire to become one. Sure, he was pushed into the Brotherhood by his pursuers, but it was a sense of family and strong purpose that he felt within them that appealed to him. Being left to survive alone at a young age may have taught Basim to live alone, but it never once gave him contentment. He longed for family, and more than anything, he strived to understand his self-worth and place in the world. On the surface, the Hidden Ones offered these things, thus alluring Basim into a false sense of identity, that of one who fights in the shadows to serve the light. For a few years, Basim trained as a Hidden One and quickly advanced from initiate to novice. Basim was dedicated to the Creed as much as any member of the Brotherhood, until one mission changed his perception on the teachings he so closely followed. He was tasked with assassinating one of the Order of Ancients, a high-ranking politician and banker in the midst of passing a new tax for the underprivileged that was way higher than the minimum wage, so that with no other choice they would have to borrow from his bank. This man was a master manipulator and inherently unjust. As Basim infiltrated the man's villa outside the city in the late evening, he spied his target. But instead of being ready for the kill, Basim was taken back. He viewed this evil man putting his young children to sleep, reading them bedtime stories, telling them he loved them, and kissing them goodnight. How could such an evil man show so much love? Who was Basim to take a father from his family? Basim's mind raced with doubt, and a sense of guilt fell over him like a cold blanket. During this brief moment, Basim, lost in his own conscience, neglected to notice the family dog barking up at him from below. Alerted, the politician launched a throwing knife towards Basim, grazing his shoulder. The politician raced towards the wall where his old sword was mounted. Catching Basim and pulling him into fight in the villa courtyard, the Hidden One had no choice but to dispatch his enemy. It was no trouble. The man was old in contrast to Basim. Laying the politician to rest in front of his distraught children, Basim shed a tear. Later at the bureau, Rasham was mulling over plans in her study. The door flew open, startling her. She jumped out of her chair in anticipation of facing an enemy, yet Rashan only saw the face of a friend. A rage-filled Basim argued into the night with his mentor on the ethics of the creed and his feelings of disillusion with Rashan's teachings. After much debate, aggressive from Basim's end, calm on Rashan's, the young man fell into a fetal position on the floor, weeping uncontrollably. For years, Rashan preyed upon Basim's pain to craft the most effective assassin, fueled by mental anguish. It worked for a time, but eventually tore her apprentice from the creed. The 
That was an example written by me to show how the story for Mirage could focus on the reality of being an assassin. It's a life of pain that no man nor woman can hope to live out with a sound mind. This could be Ubisoft's chance to move away from the classic revenge story trope and tell a visceral Assassin's Creed narrative that attempts to take the player on a journey of love, scars, and sacrifice. Thank you.